Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Rap Takes. Welcome back to another episode of Holla Takes Podcast. It's probably been a year or two years since the last time you tuned in, the last time we talked about Raptors. But guess what? It's a brand new season with a lot of high hopes. So we're back with another episode. I'm here with my boy, Zazu, from Raptors Twitter. Zazu, what's good? What's going on, Raph, man? My man, shout out to you, man. I love what you're doing out here. How's I everyone doing? I hope bro. everyone's blessed, bro. Thank Sir. you. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. And I'm not, man. I'm, I'm glad that uh, we're getting a chance to do this. You know, it's a brand new season. we got a lot to talk about. Uh, in this episode, guys, for those that are listening in, we're just going to talk about the overall feeling after preseason. We're going to talk about how we feel about Coach Darko, some surprises, some disappointments, some moves we want to see the team make, and, you know, some other things we want to get into. So thank you for joining us, and uh, let's get right into it. So Zazu, four games undefeated in preseason. How do you feel, man? Hey, man, we're making, we're making history out here making moves already man the season didn't even start we're breaking records you know <laughs> <laughs> let's, be real. Records let's be real here, let's man. be real is that how you really feel hey look that's how i really feel i'll be honest with you like um i know a lot of people don't put weight on, on preseason but i actually like what i saw let's be honest okay if we lost all all four games how are we feeling how are we really feeling you're right. You see, you see what I'm saying? You're right. You, everyone will be like, oh, this team can't even beat some Taipan Cranes team from Australia. Uh, we can't even beat the lowly Wizards. Uh, we can't even beat the Chicago Bulls all over again. Oh, man, Scotty, uh, what are we doing? Pascal, what are we doing? You know, like, Darko, the system sucked. We'll be so down. But no, man, the vibes are up, bro, because we fall in O. For the preseason, you know, um, Scotty super uber aggressive, you know, uh, looking like a borderline all star type player. Yeah, Pascal Siakam finding his way through the offense, still ball finding him, you know, and I, I just love, love that. Like, there's less ISO, you know, you kind of forget, you know, since Nick Nurse has been our head coach, you kind of forget what basketball really truly looks like, <laughs> you know. It, like, it's not one player bringing the ball up. We're firing the shots early, huh? We're firing the yeah, shots early. early. Quick. <laughs> it's fun to watch, man. So, yeah, I, I'm, 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 that's how I'm really feeling, man. Me too, bro. I think the, the thing that bothers me the most about the fan base from what I've seen is just like, oh, it's just preseason. It's just preseason. It doesn't count. Listen, man, at the end of the day, that's four organized basketball games with NBA players that don't want to lose. Yes, every team is going to go out there and play their stars for half the game and then rest them in the second half because they want to see the bench. Every team is doing that unless you're the Chicago Bulls who's really trying to win that game. But Bro. the thing is, like, it's habits, man. Like, you want to see yes. the improvements these guys made. Yes, you're not yes. seeing, like, a full version of them. Maybe you're seeing, like, 50% of some of these stars that are playing, but it's still an organized basketball game. You still see a lot of the changes they want to implement. What's preseason for? Preseason is for you to really see where everyone's at. It's for you to make a lot of... Exactly. So I don't understand yeah, and, this whole thing of like, oh, it's preseason. We can't take it seriously. Come on, man. Nah, like honestly, yeah, like I said, um, if we if it was if we were on four, you know, everyone would be so no one's saying no one's saying oh it's just preseason, you know, everyone don't want to give credit. They're so afraid to like jump back into the wagon because they've been disappointed last year. Like think about it, last year preseason our record wasn't good, you know. Um, the 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 play, the, it's just the vibes. Scotty's energy was low, like, it, it, and 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 it carried throughout the whole entire season. Yeah, you know. So then, when you when you look at the bigger picture, you you gotta see that the vibes are up. You gotta see that you know uh, Darko has his guys playing for each other, and the defense, man. Dude, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to, we'll, we'll get to how uh, Darko has his team playing. But here's one thing I really want us to like. I think you could, you probably feel the same way, and let me know if you don't. But I, this is what I want from the fan base this season. Stop with this pessimism bullshit. Stop with this, oh, you know, if you set your expectations low, you'll never be disappointed. What You're a fan. You are a fan of this basketball team. Why aren't you rooting for them? And you're just setting the expectations so low. You want to see these guys to seed instead of like oh no this guy's garbage this guy can't be a star oh this guy's sucks oh he's a fake all nba like dude like 
you're supposed to wish for the best. You're supposed to cheer these guys on. You're supposed to be optimistic. And then as a fan, when the results are out there and if it's, if it's not to your expectation, then you, man, then you just deal with it. That, that's, that's the best thing about being a basketball fan. Bro, let me tell you something quickly. Did I ever think in my lifetime I was going to see the Raptors win an NBA championship? Fuck no. Was I happy when they made the Eastern Conference Finals in 2016? Absolutely. Doesn't matter oh, if they yeah. took Indiana to Game 7, if they took Miami to Game 7. Uh, when yeah. we made the Finals, I was like, yo, we made the Finals. If we lose, I'm going to be upset. But the fact that we made it, and also, yeah. guess what? We won. That's why that championship feels so fucking good. So I don't understand this like pessimism bullshit. I'll let you add yeah. on whatever you want to add on, and we'll get into uh, no, our very I, first I totally... question. I, I totally agree with that sentiment. Like, you know, when do you have a team where in the last decade or so, we've only had one losing season, that being in Tampa? Like, even last season, as bad as it was, it wasn't a losing season. It was, it was a 500 50. season. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I just think we're spoiled, fan base. Um, and this new generation after the championship, they only know about all they know is winning. So they don't understand those dark days, man. And so they they just don't have any patience. They don't understand the nuance of things like locker room problem, drama. They don't understand like there's, there's things that affect play, right? And those things that affect play, I believe it's, it's done, over with. Like, honestly, Nick Nurse not being able to hold his team accountable last year really hurt us. Um, I, you know, I've said... One too much. I've said a lot about you know Fred Van Fleet and you know his ways, loud and clear on the Raptors cookout space and on Twitter. Um, you already know how I feel about that. I feel like he played selfishly. Uh, he wasn't playing for the team, and was, and all the players played selfish. Even Scotty played selfish. He wasn't aggressive enough. Um, Pascal was deferring too much. Uh, OG, I don't know what the hell OG was doing. Um, you know the inconsistency of Gary in terms of like not even play. He 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 was consistent with his play. It's just that like moving to the bench, you know, starting lineup getting injured. Like just the the vibes. The, like I know everyone hates hearing that word vibe, but that's the new terminology for chemistry. It was low, man. It was really low last year. So um, I I think we need only to you know change that around support this team it it looks like scotty and cole pascal and cole are looking to change things the outlook of things and, and i and i ride with them and this is my raptors man with the north man and i think we just have to take it one game at a time support them cheer them on because they haven't showed us like this preseason they haven't shown us something that i don't like uh, you know what i'm saying and so I, i'm rooting for them man i'm i'm rooting for them yeah man 100 percent that, that, that I'm on the exact same page as you, and I just don't understand this. Like, oh, um, this this is just not a good team. Oh, like we're not gonna win a championship. Blow it up. You think a team that wins a championship goes from the worst team in the league to the winning the championship <laughs> next day? No. Like it's here's the thing. When you mention, oh, a lot of these people are just spoiled from seeing this team win a lot. It's not right. even like we're gatekeeping as a fan. It's yeah. more so like there's a lot that went into this team winning a championship. They a had lot. to be consistent. They went from 46 wins to 48 wins to 50-plus wins to another 50-season win and still getting bounced out by LeBron to having another 50-season win and finally winning a championship. Like, you need to be know. consistent. Like, you need to show up to the door to be able to knock on it, right? So, I totally agree. So we need to work towards it. So with that being said, let's talk about the guy that really changed everything around for us. I mean, from what we see so far, right? Four games in, the vibes are looking great. The offense looks different. Yes, it's going to take us a long time to really put things together. But what are your thoughts on Darko? Yeah, you know, um, when Darko first came in and he was talking about how, you know, he wants to run a .5 offense and everyone just moving the ball quickly, a quick decision. I like that. I like that a lot, which meant to me it's going to be less ball ISO. And I was tired of watching ISO, 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 ISO. I mean, let's think about, think about it like since DeMar. <laughs> We've been ISOing, you know? So it's about time. Now, literally, think about it. Like, um, it's about time we, we move the rock, man, like San Antonio Spurs. You know, it's time for us to move the block like the Golden State Warriors. And those are winning organizations. They know the recipe of winning. So when Darko was saying that, I was like off, off for it, you know. And he wanted to develop the guys. And, um, I, you know me, like 
if everyone's listening, I've been to my the the cookout space. They know I'm off for the young guys getting developed and getting minutes as much as possible. You know, um, so he talking like that. I'm really really loving what he's saying. Um, so yeah, my first impression of him was great, and of course that crazy crazy uh, New York Knicks um, allegations came out. I, I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> Joke, man. What yeah, a I wasn't turned off, but you know how again these young fan base they just overreacting. Oh, Masai man should have known better. He's cooked. Oh man, a dark. I can't believe he's doing this. Just to find out, like it's nothing that serious, and no one like really and truly things like this have like have happened in the past, and no one has been sued or anything for it. This is ridiculous. Um, anyway, so back on track. Preseason starts. And you actually, actually, before preseason starts, he's talking about putting the ball in Scotty's hands more and more and more and more. And me, I, 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 exactly, that's what I like to hear. Like, the kid is a brilliant passer. Why wouldn't you want to put the ball in one of your best passers' hands, right? And so for me, I'm like, this is great. I can't wait. And so for me, uh, Darko was already checking out the boxes. So when preseason happens and you watch their play style, brother, 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 brother. Yeah, so they said, when I say they, um, a lot of the fan base or analysts are saying the Raptors are the worst half-court offensive team, um, that they don't know how we're going to gener- generate points. Do you know what we averaged in the preseason points per Tell game? Me. Tell me. Brother, over 120 points per game. Second-ranked <laughs> offense. In the preseason. Second. That's including the bench coming in the second half and cooking. Second. Okay. And right. People are gonna say, oh, it's preseason doesn't count. Blah 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 blah. Okay, fine. That's fine. <laughs> but you know what we were last year? <laughs> it wasn't pretty. But this year, no. with with less, I guess, spacing, as you would say, analytically, uh Darko's offense. Uh, it, it just allows these guys to find mismatches, exploit the defense, and get get basket faster. Um, and, and with having you know Jacoperto or even Scotty when he's playing that de facto f- five in the on the elbow, man, it, it it it's just a beauty to watch. Like, and then they have you know Pascal, Scotty, uh, even. Uh, Dennis pushing the pace on the fast break. We're a really fast team. We're a very fast team, yeah. And so we're going to score a lot of points, a lot. So here's my, here's my thing. Spe- speaking of, sorry, cut you no off problem. for a second. Speaking of fast, fast team, right? I saw someone saying in one of my group chats, "Oh, they're still getting a lot of their points off a fast break." So I'll they're getting it. points off a fast break. <laughs> it, it's, isn't the purpose of this game to score points and win? The team that scores the most points in 48 minutes wins. Doesn't matter how you get those points, whether it's Embiid style and shoot a fuck ton of free throws, or whether right. it's Steph Curry style where you shoot from the fucking moon and nail all of them. Right. Like, bro, fast break points are some of the best points you can get. You know why? Because the other team is spending a lot of time. It's the easiest. You exert Ooh. the least amount of energy because it's a quick offense. Your team is also really hyped up because you're getting a lot of good moments. The yep. other team is demoralized as shit because they're yep. on offense so many times and they're not getting, they're not converting, which is on defense, they're going to slag off even more. The more fast break points we score, the easier a half court offense is going to be. I don't do understand you, how no one gets this. Do you know why the, the Sacramento Kings were one of the best offensive team last year? Because they were also one of the fastest teams. <laughs> yeah. Like, bro. Zoom in. They're just gone. Right? And you have uh, Sabonis with crazy outlet passes. Right? Even if you watch the Denver mm-hmm. Nuggets, they're running. Yeah. They are pushing. Your kid is throwing, uh, like, full-court passes. Um, and he might as well be a quarterback, court. bro. He's, he's doing his best Pretty Tom much. Brady impression on the court. Pretty much. And again, if you watch other NBA teams, you realize a a lot of the successful teams have a great offense in terms of utilizing the fast break. Um, But yeah, yeah, going back to Darko, though, like, uh, honestly, I'm very impressed uh, with everything. Um, You know, I'm the only thing that I guess I'm not too, I'm still shaky on is the starting lineup uh, with Dennis starting. 
Um, I know some people like that. I just you don't? think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence with that, right? Like, Why? I think if you have, because I think just having, if you, okay, if you really look at the four preseason games, we, the starters kind of always, they, they struggled right out the gate, right? And yeah. the reason why they struggle is because of spacing, <laughs> right? We don't pick it up until there's a timeout called and a sub is made. And usually uh, we then pick it up. Um, but if you look at the lineups that did pretty well, it's the lineup with Scotty and a bunch of shooters, Pascal with a bunch of shooters. So um, Dennis does well when there's also a bunch of shooters around him too. So if you could, yeah, go ahead and start Dennis, but you have to make the sub maybe a little bit earlier, getting yeah. Gary in, get Gary in there, because this offense really and truly is a Gary Trent Jr. offense, um, <laughs> offense centric for him. Like this, this, this offense caters very well to Gary Trent Jr. And the results show that. Hmm. Yeah. So I, I think you know putting Dennis as a six man, and then starting Gary. We'll see. Um, starting Gary will create an even better spacing and cutting for for us. Again, I do love Dennis' pace, uh, especially in the half court. He knows how to just blow by his man. Um, but yeah, I think let's see how it goes. Let's keep the starting lineup as is right now, whatever whatever Darko is doing. And yeah. let's see how Scotty does um, with the second unit because he does get that burn as the actual point guard. And he wants to show. I want to see how what he does uh, in terms of breaking down his man and penetrating the rim. I, I haven't seen him really struggle with that as of yet. But I think the more time the season goes on, the more comfortable he'll be, the better his handles will get. Um, the more he knows how to you know, find proper angles to beat his man, to penetrate the paint. To then, you know, kick the ball out, or even that you don't need him to do all that. You know, he can just do a pick and roll with um, whether it's Precious or Jakob Pertl, um to to find the open man or get someone cutting through, cutting with a mm-hmm. dribble handoff. Like, there's so much options, but like, I I do want to find a way to like have him develop and continue to grow in that sense because he does get that chance with the second unit. Um, and when he's comfortable enough, I think I would really love to get Gary in the starting lineup just to create more spacing and chaos. I think we see it in 2024. Because the thing is, like, you can yeah. tell that Narco depends on Dennis a lot, right, yeah. to set the table. Mm-hmm. And because they have such a new offense that they're implementing, I think at least for the first 30 games, we'll probably see Dennis start. And then right. as Scotty gets more comfortable in that role, you can probably, like, I would love to see a lineup of, let's say, Scotty, Gary, OG, Pascal, and Poto, and then... Yeah. Four minutes into the first half, like first quarter, take out Jakob, go small ball, bring Dennis in, and just run these teams right. out of the gym in the first yeah, quarter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Put, put, um, put Scotty at five. Exactly, like bro, yeah, uh, like Scotty at five, just fucking running down the. It's 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 a very scary thing to see, because um, <laughs> there were moments. Because it just reminds me of like when Giannis, there are moments where he takes five, uh, plays the five, or when LeBron in the past. I played the five. Now I know those are like big guys I'm comparing Scotty to because they're MVPs and have championships. But dude, like, look at the physical makeup of Scotty Barnes. Like he has, oh, yeah, he has it. He has the it. only thing he's missing is just the willingness to do it. That's it. It's like someone give you a plate of like noodles and a bowl of noodles. And like yo, just eat it. That's that. That's how I feel when I look at Scotty Barnes as a player. And I don't understand why people don't think that he can't be a point guard. I mean, Jason Kidd went to Milwaukee and changed Giannis's career around in those two years by be, to letting him know, be like, yo, you're the point guard, make it happen. Right. right? But with, with that being said, who surprised you the most so far in the preseason? Anyone stand out to you? Uh, you know, just, of course, you know, everyone is going to notice Gary's high energy, right? Yeah. Um, and, and how he's just been aggressive. He, hit, he shot three for six on the three-point line last game. Um, no, Scott has been a delight, but I, I wasn't surprised, right? Because I knew that his lack of aggression last year was due to injuries, uh, due to the energy. You know, it's, it's hard to be motivated to play for a team that isn't playing for each other. Yeah. Especially when you are the type of player that likes to pass the ball. <laughs> like, imagine you're trying to pass the ball, but the ball is not coming back to you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, it's tough right and of course like he has to choose to be aggressive i get that 
Um, but there are things weighing against him trying to be, you know, the best that he can be last year. And I think this year, all that distractions are gone. Yeah. Um, I already, you know, I stand on knowing that like he he was going to come off the gate guns and blazing. Now I am a little bit concerned because he did tweak his foot and I into this current uh, um, scrum he he talked about how like he pretty much had PTSD <laughs> <laughs> with his foot injury. So. Um, but he said he's fine, so we'll see how that goes. I, I just hope that like it doesn't deter his aggression. Now I won't blame him if like his foot is still tender. Come Wednesday, and it's not as aggressive. Fine. Hopefully, over time he heals and gets that aggression back, and we're good to go. But the person that surprised me the most, I would say, I wouldn't even say it's the starters, right? Like, um, I really love Grady Dick. Yeah, I, I know that like he didn't shoot too well, but like. You see a white dude on the court. He's six eight, and he's scouted to be a good shooter. The amount of gravity he actually has with like his defender just locked on him, <laughs> bumping him, and he just knows that's a minute play space, and it's just great to see. Um, so I, he he was a little delight to see. Um, uh, Freeman Liberty. Uh, yeah, that kid, me too. that kid, yeah, I, he surprised me. You know, uh, I love his speed, his pace. I think like he has a chance to crack the rotation, hopefully. Um, so yeah, those those were my two delightful surprises. And uh, what surprised me, not so the player, but our offense surprised me. How well we're already, you know, you know, uh, how do I how do I say it like? How well we're already like uh, ingrained with the offense, like we just have it implemented so well, and a lot of players are finding their space and find success with it. Like a lot of players are finding success with this offense, right? Except for maybe Chris Boucher, <laughs> but um, Gary, is, as you can see, is masterful with this offense. Yeah. Um, so, bro, there's this one. Sorry, uh, speaking of no the problem, offense, could... I just got reminded of this one play. Um, I have my you whoever's listening to this, you guys can't see, but I'm gonna ask what I'm thinking about this. It was Boucher, Scotty, Otto Porter Jr., Grady Dick, and OG Ananobi. They were on the court together. OG does a dribble handoff to Scotty while Boucher sets a pick on Scotty's man. Scotty goes downhill. I think he has a big man on him, and two guys crash on Scotty. But mind you, with Scotty being like 6'10 yeah, or 6'11, he can just go and take that layup, right? Yeah. yeah. But the cool thing is the way that play was set up is what Scotty is literally right under the rim. He can either go for that quick two, and if he misses it, Chris Bush is there for the rebound. And the best part is he has three guys. Like, he had Otto Porter to the right, Grady Dick to the left, like in both corners, and then he had OG Ananobi at the top of the key, just ready for a catch and shoot. When I saw that play, I was mind blown. I was like, yo, we're running this with, like, a semi-bench unit, and I can't wait till we get the starters and we run this play with let's say, Gary, um, OG, Pascal, and everybody else on the court. And it just made, reminded me how, like, smooth the offense feels. Like, everything just, everything just feels very natural. Like, everyone is doing everything in rhythm. Nothing feels too forced. I mean, the only times it seems forced is when, you know, they're figuring it out. There are moments where they have, like, like oopsies, right? Like, mental farts, where they're like, oh, shoot, like, am I in the right spot? Or they're just trying to figure it out. And that's where I'm very impressed. And... But like I mean, on top of the guys that you're impressed with, you know, which were Grady and uh, you know Freeman Liberty, bro, I was actually ma- very impressed with Pascal. The reason being, the last two years he's used to playing on the ball a lot more, right? But you see how the moment Darko put t- took him off the on the ball, not sorry, excuse me, my English. The moment Darko took him off the ball, you see how his defense improved, and he's still pretty much getting the same productivity under less minutes. And when yeah. you wrap that up and add 10 more minutes to Pascal or even 10 more minutes to Scotty, their numbers are still going to be the same as before. But the thing is, now you're getting the defense from Pascal. He's looking like that Pascal from 2019 when we won the championship again in terms of his defense. Right. Bro, like, why? when I see things like this, I, I'm not going to accept these, excuse my French, but these fucking fans on Twitter telling me, yo, stop <laughs> being, like, so optimistic. Dude, it's my fucking basketball team. What do you mean? It's crazy. Oh, you want me to hate my team? Yeah, like, you want me to, like, just be like, oh, yeah, I expected this. Oh, yeah, like, I expected this team to lose. No, I expected to win every single fucking basketball game. And then yeah. if they lose, we'll deal with the loss later. But I expect him to win. 
I don't care if we're down 3-0 in the series. I expect to win the next four. Like, I don't understand this reasoning sometimes. But with that being said, who was the most disappointing for you? Anybody? Yeah, actually. <laughs> Chris Boucher. Go for it. Bro, Damn. Chris Boucher, bro. Like, he's, he's IQ is showing in this, in this, in this uh, offense. And this offense, you do need high IQ players. Uh, one play that I, c- I can remember even right now, like, Kyle brings the ball up. He loses his dribble. Like, he picks up his dribble early on half court, and he wants to reset. Anyone in their moms knows that he wants to reset because there's, like, eight seconds left on the clock. And with eight seconds left on the clock, Boucher, one, did not even – he thinks that, like, <laughs> there's no seconds left. Um, <laughs> so he gets the ball, right, on top of the free throw line. He still just passing it right back to Scotty that's right in front of him. He does this weird, like, post up and trying to, like, post fade. He did a yeah. reverse J.R. Smith. It was bad, bro. It was so ugly. Thank goodness he got built up by a foul call because even the defender wasn't expecting it, I guess. <laughs> it was so, like, unorthodox, like, it wasn't something anyone would think that like someone would do because the common sense is to pass it back to the guy who's actually asking back back for right. the ball. He doesn't, and he just goes into his action, and uh, he got it gets fouled. But like I'm screaming, "What the hell are you doing?" And um, yeah, Darko goes to benches him. He only played like what he barely played. He played like ten minutes that game, not until the end of the fourth quarter. He came in playing with like the, the, the scrubs, I guess. Like people got waved. Um, and yeah, he was just gonna, it's nothing, nothing good, nothing good at all. Like, I, I, there's nothing from Chris Boucher. Say, oh, yeah, it's it's such a great game. Whoa, it was, it was ugly, it was really ugly to to, to witness. And I I hope he turns around because there are people on this roster that's gonna take his his, his, his spot real fast, right? You got Precious right there. You got Coloco, who's still like you know uh, a a positive and defensive end, and he does he knows how he's a smart player. He knows how to get out of the way, you know. Um, and you still have Chris Boucher still trying to bring the ball up on the offense, bro. It's just maddening. It's really maddening for a thirty year old vet to who still be lacking on the IQ side. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. It yeah. really is. Technically, as a basketball, like, his basketball age is, like, let's say 25 because of how late he started playing. But, of course, being at the age of 30, like, you've seen everything. Like, bro, you have two mm-hmm. rings. Like, you won MVP and Defensive Player of the Year in the G League. Like, you should yeah. know better by now, right? You should know better, yeah. Like, you're, my expectation for him is so high because he's won so much. He's He's been here for so long. Like, I can't keep saying, oh, he's young in the NBA. Like, no, bro, like... If I know, I'm not gonna, like I'm not on the court, right? If I if I as a competitor can watch basketball and realize, okay, he needs to pass the ball right back to Scotty because Scotty's asking for it and there's eight seconds left on the shot clock. He, the actual basketball player, should be also aware of the that of that simple play. Right. It's literally the easiest play ever, but he somehow he botched it. Um, I don't know, but yeah, he's the only really true person I was disappointed with. Uh, anyone else? No, I was. I, everyone honestly did well. Like, like A plus, A B. The only person I'll give like a a C two was Chris Boucher or even a D. Right, but yeah. everyone else gets like a B plus and above on my books. Like, there's no one person that said, "Oh, he had a really bad game." Like, or they were disappointed. No, no one was disappointing at all. Like, at all. <laughs> like the offense was so beautiful to watch and it wasn't hard to support these guys because they played for each other they were passing the ball moving the ball I mean yeah the turnovers got too much one point was like 20 turnover but they cut it back down to 15 which is pretty good but like it, everyone just did their thing the only thing I'd be upset about which like, like I said is the the only thing that I'm upset about like I said will be the uh, the the starting lineup that would be the only yeah. thing just that spacing there but everything else for me I just as a Raptors fan I, I I'm excited to watch every single person every single person there's no one person I'm not excited to watch at all so yeah I, man, we we got a pretty lucky talented team and I think the last couple of years like we kind of lost sight of that because we've just been seeing such a horrible product on the floor like it's been packaged so terribly but yeah. I think with Darko coming in bringing in this whole new revamped offense you were starting to see much like the talent actually like 
showcase better. I mean, listen, this is, what, this is where I want to pivot to this question that I had. Even someone like Malachi, even though he's not being as, as good as we thought he was going to be, and people say that he's not an NBA player, mm-hmm. he even looks more competent than he did in the years past. Bro, like I said, like, he, I wasn't disappointed with him. Like, yeah, there's one game where he shot 0 for 7. Okay, cool. But he's rebounding his energy. He's, he, you know, his he's pace. You know, the way he ran the show for me, I think it was positive. And of course, the next game, he did, does the same thing, but he goes like 5 for 7, right? And, uh, he, you know, so it's like, hands, hats off. Good job, buddy. Keep it up. Let's see. Let's see what's, what's new, what's coming. You yeah, know, so bro, he probably went that. zero for seven. He probably went zero for seven because he never even thought he would get these minutes in the NBA <laughs> after the three years of Nick Nurse bullshit, right? He's like, yo, like Mama, you have to it's... go to PTSD on court, man. It's like, oh, what? <laughs> oh, I have the ball now. What's next? Yeah, because Nick Nurse with Nick Nurse, like he misses two shots and he's out. So he's yeah. probably like, he missed two or three. He's like, ah, oh, here we go again. You know, like yeah. I, I'm gonna get pulled. But no, I've, I've been liking what I'm seeing from Malachi. Like he's obviously had flashes. He's had some really good. I think in the last game, like you know, there was a moment where after he hit those like two threes back to back, like he was he was nice. Bro, his first step looked good. His yeah. drive to the rim looked good. Like it makes me feel like, yo, does Darko see in this guy that see something in this guy that we don't see? Because if you look at what he did with Memphis, you know, Tyus Jones. Look yeah. what he did with Tyus Jones. I'm not saying yeah. Malachi is Tyus Jones, but sure. is Malachi so far away from Tyus Jones in terms of their talent and their size, like what they can do on the court? And Tyus Jones is now in Washington as a starting point guard. Like, yeah. that's why well, I have a lot of faith in Darko. What I appreciate about Malachi is the fact that, like, you know, he's been a, a, a true a, a true pro. pro. Yeah, uh, I had a chance to, you know, um, be in a Twitter space with him and got to ask him a question or two about, like, you know, the Raptors bench and he gave a great answer. It's like, you know, it is what it is. You, you have to move on and um, and just wait your turn. Really and truly. He's been patient. Um, so I, I really want to be successful, whether it's here in Toronto or somewhere else. Um, I think he has talent. I think, you know, him this year coming back muscular, putting on weight, um, it's going to help him a lot because he looks super athletic. <laughs> you know, he looks more athletic. He looks like he's in great condition, great shape. Um, put on so, some weight. Yeah. yeah, he put on some weight. So I'm very, very excited to to watch him because he's gonna get minutes. I know he's gonna get minutes. He's he's spoken to Darker a lot. You know, those guys that talk talk to Darker a lot, they're definitely gonna get minutes. Um, and he's definitely gonna get minutes. And I think he's this right now. The way things are set, uh, he's actually the second point guard. Uh, coming off on the bench. Now, he's probably looking to play, like, the shooting guard role more so than point guard when Scotty's on with him because Scotty's the one that's usually bringing the ball up and Malachi is just pretty much waiting to catch and shoot or ball penetrate uh, as a as a secondary ball handler. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing his growth this year, uh, him taking advantage of all the opportunities that are, are laid before him. So for me, I am cheering for Malachi. Really, truly, I am. Guess what Malachi averaged assist wise? He averaged four assists in preseason. Mm-hmm. He also had five rebounds. Yeah. Not bad, bro. And he probably played like what, 18 to 18 to 20 minutes? Yeah, so for someone like Malachi, minutes. I'm not gonna complain if mm-hmm. he's giving me that production. Yeah, he played 19 minutes. He yeah. averaged seven points, four assists, and five rebounds. I'll yeah. take that. He shot forty yeah. percent from the three. Bro, I'm sick. Bro, I'm telling you, people are saying we can't shoot. Bro, I, I, I know what I saw. <laughs> and his turnover is only one turnover per game. So right. it's pretty they can efficient. dog Malachi. Yeah, they can dog Malachi all they want. I mean, his field goal percentage is at 37. It's not, that's not terrible. I think if he can bring it to no, like 40, terrible. that'd be great. If he'll go, it should be as low as 40. He can't pass 40. It can't go lower percentage. than forty. Yeah, but, that's why I don't like Fred Van Fleet because when you when you're going in there, you're getting blocked. You, like it's it's a field goal. It means that like you're you're missing a lot of tools. You're getting blocked at the rim. You're not hitting yeah. your mid ranges, right? Like if your three point shot is at forty, then you're it. That means you should easily be able to get an easy layup, <laughs> an easy floater game, something, right? Um, which means that like your field goal should be higher than your three-point shot, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at Javon Freeman-Liberty. The 10 minutes he played, he averaged seven points, mm-hmm. three rebounds, and one assist, shooting 54% from the field. Right, exactly. 
Like that's good. That's that, good. That's terrifying. Like terrifying in the sense that this guy's gonna go to nine of five, and with the Raptors having their G League team literally like thirty right minutes there. away, which yeah. is the closest G League team, they, he's gonna get a lot of like. Double, like you know, those when Delano first came yeah. and the Raptors were playing in both the Raptors and 905. Mm-hmm. I think that's gonna happen to like Javon, and he's probably gonna get converted halfway throughout the season. 100%. Yeah, I know like, Raptors gonna test him out. I really like the kid, man. I just there's a lot of Raptors players I really like. I really like they have a lot uh, of good pickups this season. Yeah, I just I don't know who I'd cut, bro. I don't know who I'd cut. I mean, mm-hmm. we'll get into it. Well, that, that's actually yeah. something I, I want to get into with you earlier, but. Uh, I think that answers the question because I was going to ask you: Do you think Malachi Flynn has a future in the NBA? I think he does. I think this yeah, is the year I, where he I can really prove himself. Idea, I don't know where this idea comes from. Like, oh, it's not an NBA player comes from. Like, what have you guys been watching? Like, you have to be objective here. This is why I'm talking about these new fans, right? They don't understand the nuance of of an NBA season, the impact of a coach to a player. You know, if if you are playing a, any kind of sport and your leech is super short in terms of the amount of mistakes you're able to make, what kind of confidence do you think you're going to have? You know, your confidence is going to be shot. And that's exactly what happened to Malachi. I was like, his leech was so short. And the crazy part is that, like, in his rookie season, he played well or he, he showed flashes. But then his second season when Scotty came, he was Buried in the bench. Yeah. Buried. Not because of play. Not because, it, like, it's just buried. Right? And, and um, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to find success when your coach really doesn't like you and you he's not giving you any chance or opportunities to shine or do anything productive. And when you get in there, you're busy looking over your shoulders because you think you're going to get yanked. And, yeah, you do get yanked. Yeah. So you do, you do. So with that being said, yeah. With that being said, let's 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 wrap it up by constructing our roster, right? Mm-hmm. So you said that you don't really know who you're gonna cut, but to be honest, man, like I think it's pretty it's pretty clear. So I'm gonna read out that think the first top seven to you, right? So we got okay. Scotty, Pascal, Gary, OG confirmed, Jakob confirmed, right? Dennis yeah. Shooter confirmed. So those yeah. those six confirmed, and then we got our next tier of guys. You got Grady Dick, Precious Achua. Chris Boucher, um, Thaddeus Young is going to make the roster. Otto Porter is going to make the roster. That's 11 guys right there. We have four more guys that we can keep for the season. So Jeff Downs is no longer with us, right? So Uh, Jalen McDaniels is going to take that 12 spot. You got um, Garrett Temple is going to take the 13th spot, okay? And then after that, you got a bunch of dudes. You got three guys that are on... Two ways. And out of those three guys, you got Marquise Noel, Ron Harper Jr., and you got Javon Freeman Liberty. And out of those three guys, only two of them can make the roster past the trade deadline, pretty much. And I think it's pretty obvious that Marquise Noel is not gonna make the roster, bro. I love the guy. I, I do love Marquise Noel, but it's a great story. But he's great just, story, he's, but he's just too small, man. Um yeah. I hate to be a um is a, a heightist a thing. He just your height, man, is just unfortunate, yeah. man. Because if he if he was literally like four f- foot taller, <laughs> just four four inches. Would have been not, a problem. We inches, said sorry. that about Norman Powell too. Four we inches like, taller. If Norman Powell was only two inches taller, oh yeah, it's over. Yeah. Right. I forgot yeah. to mention. I forgot to mention Malachi Flynn in, into that. So sorry, Malachi, if you're listening to this. Which you probably are. Um, <laughs> so we have one more spot left for the regular season. Sorry, not the regular season, but after the two ways are done. And so we got um, Ron Harper Jr., Marquise Noel, and Freeman Liberty fighting for the last spot. I think it's pretty obvious Freeman Liberty is going to take that spot, bro. Okay, he's so... better than Ron Harper Jr. Well, aren't they two ways? Already? Yes. So the way the two ways work, uh, if, if if for those that are listening, that if you're not familiar with how the two ways work, so three players can be on a two way contract on your NBA team for 50 games in the season. Out right. of, after those 50 games, you have to decide to convert them. Right. So with the Raptors, after with all the moves that they're done, done making for this, like you know, this off season, not the off season, but preseason so far, they have a total of 17 guys on their roster. Right now, 
because right. um, McCool Makers in the uh, G League now. You got Jeff Dutton who got well, waived. We and, waved him. We waved McCool. Yeah. yeah, we waved him. Same with uh, Gay. He got uh, our guy. Sorry, he got waved too. And then yeah, and then now we just Jeff Dutton's gone. So now we have a roster of seventeen guys. With well, they said four. I just got I just got um notification saying the Raptors roster is finalized with 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 what it is right now. Yeah, so that's the final roster up for mm-hmm. the first fifty games of the season. Okay. So once the first fifty games of the season are completed, the Raptors have to then cut their roster to fifteen guys, and mm-hmm. out of those fifteen guys, fourteen are already guaranteed contract dudes on the main roster, and then the last spot that's remaining is going to be fought between. Uh, Noel, Freeman Liberty, and Ron Harper Jr. And I, that's where I was mm. saying, I think out of those three guards, it's pretty obvious that yeah, Freeman Liberty that, is going to yeah. just take that spot. They definitely gave Freeman Liberty a long look in this preseason, so that definitely bodes well with him. Uh, for yeah. him. I do like Ron Harper Jr. Uh, I really do. I like his size. Um, uh, you like his I'm thickness? Hoping... <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> It's an NBA ready body. It really, he truly does. And I think that, like, all he really needs to do is get if his jump shot was more wet. Like, if that jump shot is cleaner, I think he has a chance, really and truly. But I, I do like his size. I think he, his size can help him play good defense. But, man, you, you can't teach speed, man. You can't teach you can. speed and a ball. You, you got to be gifted with it. You got to be gifted yeah, with it. You know, and he's, you know, Freeman Liberty is just such a, a ball hawk, like he's in there scrapping for the rebounds, 50 50 balls. He's winning them. You need the players like that around players who are scrappy that like just get, like, they go get it, you know? So, um, the, the writing might be on the wall, but who knows? 50 games is a long season. You never know, knock on wood, injuries could happen. Yeah. You know, um, someone could take off, uh, you know, uh, some somebody might expose themselves to some lady. You never know. <laughs> You never know. It's a fifty. We went there. We did, man. It's it's a fifty. You know, games, and that's a lot of months in the NBA. And these some of these guys are naughty. Some of them are good. You just never know who you have on your team and what. Yeah, I mean, look at our guard depth now. Look at our guard depth now, right? So we've got Dennis Schroeder, Gary Trent Jr. I don't know if you want to classify Grady Dick as a guard, but I guess you can squeeze him in there. Uh, Freeman Liberty, and then you have Malachi Flynn. So that's our guard depth. Not that's terrible. Good. Not terrible. Mm-hmm. I think it's good. All those guys are playable. All those guys are playable. So at least we got guards that, that are playable. And I think Javon Freeman Liberty, like, where I really see him coming cooking, man, is I don't know if you've seen his G League stats from last year when that's he was good, with the uh, Windy City Bulls. Yeah, okay, bro. Three points there, this yeah. guy's a straight bucket. So. Yeah. I can't wait to see him cook with the nine to five, and then just learn the Raptor system with there, because I know there's going to mm-hmm. be parallel, and then just come over and just start cooking with the main roster. Because I know when he gets his minutes, he'll make use of it. I mean, you're talking about him being a ball hawk. His per thirty six number, he's averaging two steals, yeah. right? For per thirty six, which is great for a guy his size too. And he's not old. He just turned twenty four. No, he's young, right? I know he's young, and I, I hate the fan base sometimes when they go like, "Oh, he's twenty four. Oh, Gary Trent's the same age, dude." Do you think every NBA player is going to be on your team for a decade? No. He's 24. <laughs> Fine. He's entering his prime. Get three, four years out of him, and then he can ship him off. It's all about this season, man. It's about this season first. Yeah. Even DeMar, who, like, you know what I'm saying, like, one of the Raptors great, only was here for, like, nine years, I think. Yeah. Something small like that. Like, oh, not a full decade. So Yeah. I'm to tell you, like, how long, the, like, even Vince Carter, Vince Carter, Bargnani, and all these guys don't stay You did not just say Bargnani, bro. Hey, man. We're showing him love. <laughs> Look, Bargnani, really, truly, he would be a goaded in this, in this era. In this era. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, man. So, Colangelo was just ahead of his time with these, with these picks he was picking. He was. <laughs> all, those, all those shooting bigs that we used to have that we want now. <laughs> crazy man we want shooting bigs can't get them no more well so now this is the last thing I want to get into um, before we pretty much close it out let's just get, show some love to the new guys and how they've looked so far right so what are your thoughts on McDaniel so far 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, talk about someone that's surprising. Jalen McDonald was pretty surprising to me. I totally forgot about him. Wow. Oh, to you, my friend, if, you, if you're out there listening. But yeah, he was. Yeah, talk about another 50-50 type of guy. He's, he's that. Um, and you need guys like that that are winning those 50-50 balls. He's, he's long, man. He's tall. You know, big. Did you see his stats? His um, stats in 18 minutes uh, this preseason, he averaged eight points, six rebounds, yeah. and one block, and he also scored 45% from the field. His threes are down to 30, which, yeah. uh, you know, I, it'll probably come up during the regular season, but at least, like, we saw him hit some crucial threes when he needed to. Yeah. And on top of that, bro, like, if you're getting, if you're, like, our bench guys right now are giving us points and rebounds and hustle. Like, what else can you really ask for? Like, our he's bench... a guy that you don't need to run the office. He's, just, he's a cleanup oh. guy. Is, that's my point. He's in the right place at the right time. Right? Like, how many times did he, you know, um, someone miss a jump shot, misses a shot, he's right there, offensive rebound, got it. Yeah. Kicks back out, right? A loose ball, he's, different. he's, one, he's already there, gets it. Um, someone's dribbling, the ball gets poked, goes right to his hand. Like, the guy is there. He just knows how to sniff out loose balls. And, yeah. And, and that's, again, like I said, someone you need on your team. And, uh, yeah, he's not someone that can, you know, create his own shot yet. Um, but he still has an upside, I think. Um, I think he he fits it very well in our off in our offense. Very, you very need, well. You need utility guys like that. Like you don't need every single player on your team to be a shot mm-hmm. creator, right? So like 100%. when you have guys like Jalen McDaniels who can just insert himself into any lineup, literally, you can just put him into any lineup to just be that dirty work guy who can get that rebound when you least expect it, who can hit that. At corner three, who can get that block free? Like, oh. and that's what we kind of expect out of Precious too. So his defense is incredible. Oh, it's great. So when we were playing against the Chicago Bulls, and the game was it the Bulls? Yeah, the Bulls. And the game was super close. We were up by two points or one point, something like that. And they gave the ball to Patrick Williams. He guarded Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams had a chance to hit a, um, a, a go-ahead uh, layup, and he just went vertical, contest, and just altered what Patrick Williams' um, layup on the on the, in the crunch. <sighs> wow, you know he, he that's that's you know yes Malachi went down and hit a free a couple of free throws to, to ice the game, but that play right there won the game. Yeah, you know and and. and our bench this whole preseason, they didn't lose the lead. They added on to the lead, yeah. which is something we haven't seen in a while. Like last in a year. a very long time. Bench cons and leads are gone. So I have faith. Yes, people say it's preseason. I have faith that this bench will hold up because they actually have a lot of shooting in the bench and a lot of deep defense on the bench and length. Think about who's coming off the bench. Preston Chichua. <laughs> he's a defensive menace, mm-hmm. right? Uh, now we got Jalen McDaniels. We got yep. um, right now Gary Trent. Right now Gary Trent. Gary's, Gary's the only one that's really truly, I'll say, you know, might be you know finicky on the defensive end. But even then, he he gets a lot of steals. Yeah. Um, I know people say, oh, Grady Dick, you know, he he uh, he's also not a good defender. But like, I feel like he plays really hard. You know, hard enough to be on the floor defensively, and well, because of his length, length though, because of size. Brady's length and his mm-hmm. effort, you're gonna get those like right. he's gonna disrupt the passing lanes. Exactly. He's gonna get some of those like help blocks. Like he he'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not worried about him, and I love his his tenacity for the offensive rebounds. He just goes after it, and you don't expect him to go after those rebounds, but he does, and he gets them. So that's a positive on the defensive end because you get that, you're resetting it, you, you get to reset your play, you start all over again. Um, who else we got got on the bench? Um, Mal- uh, well, we talked about Malachi Flynn already, right? Malachi Flynn. Malachi is a good def- like I think he's a good defensive guard. Uh, and then, yeah, like like I said, our bench is in. Uh, 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 of course, you have Chris Boucher, right? So, oh, Christian Coloco. Yeah. Right? So we do have solid defenders 
on the bench and, and, and shooting on the bench. So I'm very excited for, for this season, man. Uh, I'm very excited for him. Check this. This is what I love across the board. So Chris Boucher, Precious Achua, and Jill McDaniels, right? They all got the same amount of minutes uh, during preseason. Give yeah. or take one or two minutes. Right. All three of those guys averaged eight or nine points and five or six rebounds off the bench. Right. <laughs> love that. Do it by committee, bro. That's it, man. And it's going to be great. It's going to be, like I said, this season is going to be a season to remember. Uh, a lot of us, you have analysts like Sam Mitchell pegging us out of the complete <laughs> playoff. Uh, not even a play-in team. He has Detroit Pacers magic um, ahead of us uh, to make the play-ins. That's absolutely insane, man. Yeah, yeah. So That's we have- just insane. We have analysts uh, out there doing nonsense, and you have some fans agreeing with that. So for me, it's like uh, we, you, you can't get worse. <laughs> Here's the thing, man. Worse, right? with, with fans that agree with dumb takes like that, are they actually fans of the team, I don't though? Think so. Are they I actually fans so. of the team, or are they just like, you know how we have – Certain like celebrities that we look at are like, oh, that guy's a bum. Oh, that guy's a piece of shit. Like we 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 do stupid things like that. Yeah. Is it like one of those situations? Like, do they actually watch the Raptors play, or do they just want to come on and shit? Want this team to be shit, so there's something to laugh at. Like, like I don't understand this. Yeah, it's like they they I, I guess they have their agendas. You know, they. Yeah, they, but they can, they you say, oh, so. can you cash those agendas out? Can you cash that out? Well, you you not let, look, I've already made bets with people on Twitter saying that the Raptors are a playoff team. Um, and when they make the playoff, they can have to pay me two hundred dollars. So I remember that. I stand on that. Okay, I stand on that. Uh, I believe that we are top five seed uh, in the East. Uh, if everything goes well, top four. You can't name five best teams better than Toronto Raptors. No, you can. You can try. You can absolutely try. <laughs> We're doing this again. <laughs> you know, but you're not gonna do it. Like I'm not gonna buy it. You're, you're not gonna convince me. Um, but yeah, I'm very high on this team. I, I believe we have the right coach in place. I believe as long as Pascal is here and, you know, he eventually gets his extension. I believe in Pascal to get his extension, actually. I um, believe in it too. Get, I think he'll get it. Yeah, in OG to get his extension. Precious extension is by tonight or something like that on the 23rd tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I, I like what I see. I believe in us. I believe that we can make noise. And uh, bet on the over, guys. Bet on the over. Uh, yeah, man. If, if I could bet the house on the over, 100% would. 37 and a half games. That's an easy... Like, bro, we were in a clusterfuck easy. of a situation last year and we won 41 yeah. games. And you were telling me that we can't win over 37 games this year. It's absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, any last points you want to make? Um, I think, you know, for everybody that's listening still, like, I just want everyone to know that you know, like Zazo and I, like us having this conversation right now, this is going to be an ongoing thing. We're probably going to have moments like this quite a bit throughout the season. So if you guys have any questions, you know, tweet at me. Uh, you can always tweet at Zazu. Zazu will plug, plug in his Twitter at the end of this uh, podcast. But um, yeah, Zazu, anything else you're looking forward to uh, about the season? Any expectations you have from anyone specific? No, I uh, my expectations are, are the same. I believe that, like, you know, I'm, I believe in this team. Okay, um, I'm not. I'm not gonna be surprised when we when we start winning games, a lot of games, and everyone starts saying, "Oh, we're actually good." Oh, yo, oh, wow, that won't be me. Okay, that will not be me. I will not be surprised when we, at the end of the season, are the fifth or fourth seed. Everyone else will be, but I won't be. And yeah. everyone's gonna come around, and they're gonna be like, "Oh man." Wow, this is great. You guys want to jump on the bag wagon? And, and, and I want everyone to apologize to the squad, man. That's but what you know I what want. we got to say about, about that, right? They on, they that, on side. that side. <laughs> they on that side, man. For those that are they listening, if you, if you don't know what that means, it's an inside joke we have uh, on Raptors Twitter. If you don't know what Raptors Twitter is, it's just a bunch of Raptors fans. We all follow each other. Uh, it's a really big community. There's thousands and thousands of people out there. We talk about the Raptors. We follow the team, and it's a really nice community. We have Twitter spaces that Zazu hosts. They're called Raptors Cookout. Um, there's also spaces hosted by other members at random times. We always get together after games, before games, 
or whenever like any news comes out regarding the Raptors. It's a really nice community. If you really want to get involved in it, find me on Twitter at Raft Takes. Zazu, you want to plug in your Twitter? Yeah, just Zazu Oki. That's it. Z A Z U O K E. You find me. It'll be my face. That's it. I'm pretty straightforward. I don't have. I have nothing to hide. <laughs> yeah, hit us yeah. up. Hit us up. Find us on Twitter. Hit us up. And uh, if you're listening to us on YouTube, please subscribe, like this, comment. Let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, we're. I'm gonna be doing this after every single game. Um, there's 82 games, so that means there's 82 pods that are gonna be dropping, and then there's always gonna be pods. Uh, you know, throughout the week, once a week at least, and. Zazu and I also have some great news uh, that we'll share a little bit later with you guys, not in this podcast, but uh, make sure to come on over to our Twitter uh, when we do make that announcement. It's a very exciting um, project that we're going to be working on. So it is Raptors related, so come on and uh, check it out. But with that being said, guys, uh, thank you again for joining the very first episode of this season. It's going to be a phenomenal season. Very excited to, um, you know, watch history unfold with all of you. That's right. Thank you again yes, for right. joining us. And uh, before, with- before before they go, just like, you know, um, whenever you guys come to this podcast afterwards, you know, join us at the cookout space, man, on Twitter after every game. Um, you know, if you want straight fans reaction, angry fans, happy fans, the cookout space is where we, we got everything cooking. Uh, Raph will be there helping me co-host and that. Um, so I uh, hopefully I get to meet you guys there and, and to have you guys coming up and, and give your thoughts about what you saw. I think it'd be great to have, you know, blended communities from YouTube, Twitter, uh, even the Raptors app. I know we have some community Raptors app. Um, so yeah, everyone come on down, man. Welcome to the cookout. Yeah. I mean, it's bring the energy. You can come in and just be a listener and just consume, or you can even come up and, uh, give us your takes and cook with us. So it's, it's, there's something in there for everyone. So come on through. And uh, with that being said, guys, thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you all next time. It's your boy, Raph Takes. Peace.